<laughs> hey guys, so we just arrived into uh, in Quebec City and we're about to explore. We found some really, really cool sites to check out. And like I said, I've been telling people before, this place is like Rome. Like, literally. They, um, our churches were a big, big thing back in the 1800s and still are in Quebec City. Um, and it's very, very old. There's a lot of old, old buildings that were turned into restaurants and things like that. But first, we're going to check out something really, really cool that I've been egging on seeing. is the Morin Center that housed the, um, the original Quebec jail. This is the oldest jail in Quebec. Um, I'm not exactly sure on the year, but we're going to get that info later on. And hopefully we can get some personal interviews with some fun stuff. But anyway, a good one. You got sketch artists and stuff like that. Hey, did you see that guy playing guitar? He's amazing. That's got to be one of the best like performers I've seen like just on the streets. Like that was amazing, man. I got a little bit of him on film. He was like just waving his guitar around and stuff. But yeah, right, look, guys, Quebec City. So now me and Betty are gonna go get some nice food to eat. Hopefully we can uh, brush up on some of the uh, French food. I saw a segment on the show. Yep. A couple of weeks ago, and this lady came here and doing what we're doing. Yep. And she thought everything was awesome here, but she raved about the food. She, she actually ate like. She thought it was fantastic, eh? Four meals in a five minute video. So we got something to look forward to. There's some beautiful artwork going on. Everything. We got some really, really old uh, buildings here, guys. You gotta check this out. It's mom and Dennis and my mom far ahead. Mama Wolf, as my uh, as my team would say, the Wolf Pack. There's an old building here. I want to see the statue though. Look at this statue, Betty. Is that the Pope? Uh, Dennis? What's the statue of? Is it the Pope? Yeah, is it a Pope or something? Let's check it out. I'm gonna check this statue out. Here's another old building over here. What's cool is the, uh, the front of that structure over here. Yeah, I'm gonna go to the front. Did you want to get a picture of it? No, I packed with my camera. Okay. So you get the statue, man. It looks cool. Wow. Hey, look at this. Honestly, old stuff is beautiful. We don't make buildings like this anymore, and it's sad. Like, it's just absolutely fabulous. So here we go. Francis de Laval de Montmorency. That was incredible. Wow. 
what's going on guys? So today we're visiting the oldest jail in all of Quebec. Well, this is Quebec City, so this is the old part. So here it is. This is the uh, Morin Center. I'm here with Betty. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> She's taking photos and talking to peeps. And I'm also with mom, Dennis. <laughs> Look at this thing, man. This is so cool. I wait. <laughs> oh, you're in it. It's a, it's a, I got super view on you. It's like a castle over there. This is sick. So let me check it out. I can't get my other car, man. Can you help me for a sec, Betty? I can't get my arm in my backpack. <laughs> Remember, when we're old, you have to take care of your love. Okay, what? <laughs> oh, <whoa. laughs> so that's one of A5. Was this like a map of the jail? Was this a map of the jail on the wall over there? Yeah, it's the first floor how it looked like. Oh, wow. So welcome to jam. Wow. <laughs> so as you can see on the side, uh, this is where we have our cells. And in each one of them, we're going to put between five to seven prisoners. So in one block like this, there are between 30 to 50 individuals. And so this is what you might have noticed from our entrances. They're pretty narrow. And that was for a security measure. Because having one guard watch over 50 people, that could be dangerous. It could gang up on them and attack them. So what guards would generally do is just stick around the doorway. So if any prisoner tries to attack them, they have to go single file. And the prison guard, what they normally do is just play my wall, bang, bang, and when they're unconscious, put them back in their cell, and stay with them. Now, even with that security measure put in place, we're going to have more than 150 escapees. So let's say you guys are prisoners and you need the judge to escape, where would you attempt? Yes, I'm going to pretty right in the window. <laughs> we have a few like that, and we're like, okay, where should I escape? Who? So. <laughs> Did you go to jail for an escape many times? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she saw the movies. Okay, so I escape plan. I gotta get my first get a coach strike, attach onto bars, break it out, go out, change to a man, but it's not robber. Boom, that's my plan. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. So, you can actually do that because what would happen as uh, people, uh, as you can see these windows, they direct to a public street. So they either like pass a tool or like tie the bars into like a horse carriage or whatever. <laughs> Break the bars, and then when the person went out the window, turn across the street, and boom, you're lost. Wow. So not very well thought. And the reason why we decided to build those huge windows in front of public streets was to make it more hygienic. Because once again, 50 people crammed in here, it got very smelly, especially, especially since back then, we really wash ourselves four times a year. So it smelled like a sweat and teen spirit. Wow, it's cramped in here. And to make matters worse, down this hallway, That's creepy. So what happens? Whatever it is. Is it a court case about your case or not? If you're not, oops, sorry, you'll be sent back or back. A safe with archives? If we're guilty, then that case we're gonna have to be Yeah, archaeological. One of which, just like in the cartoons, we're gonna lock you up in the box. 
So you put your hand here, hands there, very simple. And this is going to be placed in a public space, like a market or by the seaport. And we're going to throw stuff at our prisoner's face. Any ideas where we're going to throw at them? Uh, tomatoes and stuff right. like that. So we see that sometimes like in cartoons and movies, we're going to throw tomatoes, but that's the end. Tomatoes, just like tea, was very expensive. So if I were to give you 20 bucks, would you be sad? No, I'd be sad. How about a bunch of 20s? I'd be happy if I had Yeah, Please continue. Yeah. Maybe I have a depression by the come on. So, same for prisoners, if you throw tomatoes, he would eat it, try to put it in his pocket, and then one release, sell it all back, and make a ton of profit. So not much of a uh, punishment when by the end you become rich. <laughs> so, and then you said stone? Yeah, so that would be also a pretty good idea. However, if you were to throw a stone too hard at Bridget's head and he dies, well, sorry, you just committed murder and we're gonna hang you for it. So you're playing a bit risky when you're playing with stone. <laughs> what? The egg? Egg, and actually, no, not even rotten food. It would be feces. Ew, oh, really? Yeah. Horse poop, human poop, dog poop, pig poop, whatever was lying around. You take a handful, throw it in the prisoner's face, ha ha ha, then go on with your day. Now, weirdly enough, our prisoners, they didn't mind. Because for them, the worst case scenario to be locked up in the stocks is during winter time. So any Americans here? Yes, no, okay. So. We have here winters that reach up to minus 45 degrees Fahrenheit or minus 35 degrees Celsius. So imagine one week time in the cold with no mittens, no scars, no hat. There's gonna be many cases where prisoners are gonna go dead due to the cold. We have to amputate their hands due to frostbite and hyperthermia. So during the summertime, you have a bunch of poop in your face. Yes, it's gross, it's revolting, but at least your hands and feet are intact, so yeah. And if not, just bring it one step over we would sometimes use this whip right here called a cow nine tail whip. So civilians can only get 30 lashes maximum, but British soldiers on your hand will be 400. Wow. So if you're a British officer, don't break the law or else you're gonna pay full price. Wow. And you can see right there in this illustration, we have a prisoner that's being flogged and there is a bucket of butter kept nearby. Any ideas why? Why do we have a prison? Why do we have water for prisoners to be whipped? Yeah, exactly. After 12 or 15 lashes, you would pass out due to the pain. And under British law, you had to feel every single hit. So if you were to pass out, we would take the water, wake you back up, and once you're conscious again, keep on lashing you. Wow. No cheating, you're gonna feel every hit. And then finally, in my opinion, this is maybe one of the worst types of punishment. We have here a prisoner that is butt naked, and as you can see from a hot iron, we are going to burn off his crotch. Oh my gosh. Yeah. This was reserved, however, mainly for rape. <laughs> so if a man were to rape a woman, we would just burn off his ding dong to make sure we would never do that. His <laughs> ding So, pretty effective, but also very brutal. And so, the reason why we know all of this information it's really thanks to our registers. So you guys can have a closer look. You'll see uh, the handwriting is very beautiful. You clearly put a lot of time and effort in it. So in the far left-hand column, this is where you'll find the name of the prisoner, his gender, his age, etc. Then right beside those big massive paragraphs, that's their crime. What they did, how they were caught, etc. And then finally, on the far right-hand column, that's their sentence. Year and date they came in our jail, year and date we're going to release them, and the punishment is going to be assigned to them. Wow. And fun fact about the 19th century, so here today in Canada, if you're 18 years old or older, and you commit a crime, we can send you to jail. This is what we call our age of maturity or age of reason. But back in the 19th century, what do you think was the minimum age? 14, 12. Lower than 12. 10? Ten? Lower. Eight. Close. Seven. Wow. wow. So if a seven-year-old child commits a crime, he is locked up with the adults. He will get 30 lashes. And if he murders someone, we're going to hang him. Now having a seven, eight years old committing murder is very unlikely. So most of our seven, eight years old, they're gonna be locked up for public drunkenness. Which, yeah, I'm like, we're just like, what? Yeah, yeah uh, back then, women and mothers 
actually wouldn't give water to their children because we didn't drink from the tap. We were scared of getting diseases like tuberculosis, cholera, typhus, etc. So to give a little chance to their child from catching and getting diseases, mothers would give beer and wine to their children. So imagine those little elementary school kids after school. They would be walking all zigzag and crooked because they'd be drinking beer and wine all day long. And if they were caught by policemen, they would be arrested and sent to jail to sober up. So yeah, so sadly for them, they would be locked up with the adults. And if not, the other younger prisoner that we had here, he was 12 years old. And the reason why he was locked up is because he played Ding Dong Ditch. For those of you who don't know what that is, it's when you oh, run Nick, away. Uh, Nicky Nicky Nine Doors. Yes, Nicky Nine Doors, yes. Yeah. Yeah. There's someone like uh, Drop, Drop, Run, Ginger Door, like just different names, but yeah. Yeah, that's the main one. Same, same thing, you knock on a door, you run away, yeah. boom, that's a prank. You think it's funny. <laughs> so, <laughs> thankfully for me, I do not live in the 19th century, because I would be sent to jail a few times for that prank. Oops. <laughs> And so for him, just for doing that prank, he's going to be locked up for a whole week in our jail. So yeah, I think he learned his lesson not to knock on people's door. <laughs> and if not, just to conclude a bit this room right here, right there where you're stepping on this side, this is our authentic flooring that's 200 years old. Wow. So you'll see we have a bunch of engravings made by our prisoners, like we have a name right here. Oh, we got wow. initials there and, there. and then right here where a bunch of them guys are walking up right here, this is a chess or checkerboard. So the square with the X represents the black tiles. Normal, the normal ones are the white ones. And every time I look at my chess board, I always chuckle a bit to myself. Because in our jail, there was no knives, there was no tools. So really, the only way to achieve those engravings are prisoners who are going to use their nails. Wow. Yeah. So that guy right here, he was really determined to play chess in here. <laughs> like oh by the gosh. end, his ten fingers were probably all broken and bloody. Like, okay, who's game on? Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Any questions? No. So in that case, I'll get. I'll let you guys walk around for you to take pictures. If any questions pops up, don't hesitate. And if not, I think <laughs> we're gonna go see our next cell block right inside. Okay. There's some cool stuff in here. Man. So this is one of the cells, guys, and now it's all like, uh, it's all like historical, so there's some other stuff in here. There's a ship. Okay, so walk around. <coughs> is that a cell, too? No, that's the toilets. Oh, that's where the washroom was. I just missed that one part. Yeah, all these doors are ready. This is crazy. Oh, is there another room in there? Oh, I didn't even see that. Wow. Okay, so we got some extra. We got plates and stuff from back that time period. And here are muskets. 
You can see the musket balls. Ball of chain there. Are this these is... coins? Betty, Betty, get a snap of this. Look at that. It's a little uh, little bottle. It says Quebec on it. And Betty loves coins. Whenever we go to a store site, and there are old coins, Betty, Betty wishes that she owned them. Look because that one. Okay, I don't know. If that oh, this is for this, oh, this is for Mike token. the relic hunter, buddy. Check out these coins. You got eighteen twenty seven. Quebec coins. These are ancient. These things are these things are worth your money right there. Really amazing. Eighteen twelve. There you go. Half penny token. Now that one's worth something. Yep. Yeah, no problem. Wow, look at that. There's some old shackles right there. Very very old shackles. And there's a temperature thing so that the artifacts don't uh, deteriorate. There's a big key. Wow, this is incredible. Oh, I'm sorry, guys. Sorry. Oh, I don't remember if I saw that. Bottles, mm -hmm. Some little bottles here and buttons. Cool. Oh, sorry, guys. Oh, that's the ship. Yeah, I've been in here. I've been in here. <laughs> yeah, I know. Is it cool, eh? You know what this doesn't this remind you of the Don Jail? Yeah, a little bit. A little but bit of the Don Jail tour. More stuff here. Can you see all the I don't know. Do you get photos of that stuff? Yeah, of all the ones that got the text on them. I took photos oh, yeah. of it. Cool? Yeah, yeah. You guys all come here? So now we're gonna go to the next uh, block. Now a little heads up. If it looks like a creepy dungeon, that's mm -hmm. perfectly normal. Because on the other side, we did no touch-up whatsoever. So I have a very good idea how to jump back in its heyday two hundred years ago. Wow. So you guys can follow me. So we're going to see the good stuff. And it, there's no protocol. Like, if a Tory gets stuck, this is wow. what you do. Like, yeah. it never happens. But luckily, his wife was like, oh, well, don't worry. She takes out of her purse a little thing of Vaseline. Oh. And he says, okay, honey, time to do the shaky, shaky. So he, <laughs> that here. he shakes like that, and then he slips out. I was like... Why, why do you have Vaseline in your purse too? Does this happen often? <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Wow, this is insane. You need a flashlight for here. Did you survive? <laughs> so how was it? It's really dark and gross. Gross? Yeah. So imagine saying <laughs> days on end. Would that be fun? Oh, yeah. No. Yeah, you just have one. So normally you'd be locked up for like six days in a row. Because on Sunday you have to go to church. That was your bed, guys. Sweet. However, if you're an Irishman, because back in the day we hated Irish people in the passion, uh, this rule wouldn't apply. Okay. So we're gonna have like one of our prisoners gonna be locked up in Can I go? Yes, let's go. Oh man, it. man, I'm so stoked. <laughs> <laughs> Normally people try to avoid it, but I guess you're like the other time. Like, yes! Lock me, chain me up on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> so, same principle. I need to spell me on. You're gonna be like the, what's the movie? Uh, Blair's Witch? 
Oh, yeah. Yeah, here. Blair, where is it? It's like more in the prison. Oh. <laughs> wow. Now we're locked in. They literally scratched into these walls, guys. This is really creepy stuff. Look at this. Look at this. Wow. There's more graffiti in here too, eh? Yeah. Wow. And you'll see on the floor, there's a graffiti written by Pierre Vibello. I own the graffiti. Yeah. Pierre Vibello. Pierre Vibello. Pierre Vibello. Pierre Vibello. Is it right here, the signature? Yeah. The J and K? Now, you know, he's gonna escape 12 times here and five times in the other jail. How? We don't know. And we still look to this day. And at one point when he escaped, he wrote a letter from the prison. Wow. Thanks for doing an awful job. Keep it like that, because thanks to you, I wouldn't have escaped. By the way, I was sick, right baby. Here. So if ever you change the menu of the prison, I might come back because you should be discussing right now. So if you change Betty, the there's a photo for you. Back, he wrote a signature here. Yeah, you won't see me anytime soon. Sincerely, Jean-Pierre Bello, you suck having a mistake. Which I'm like, wow, SAS level. Like, I'll show stuff. you where it is, Betty. I should wrote a letter to the prison guard okay. telling him he sucked at his job. It's part of it here? Disgusting. And if it gets there, it's then he might come back. Wow. <laughs> yes. Like, he had time to write his name on the full floor, and then escape, which I'm like, he must, like, he must be like her, like, she, like, he saw him, like, okay. Oh, yeah, there's a light. Yeah. There's my light, but there's this bars here. Wow, that was incredible. <laughs> you had a question? I'm just thinking, how did he manage to on the... We still don't know, like, that's pretty impressive. Like, you had double doors, we'd yeah. never have contacts and be, like, once a day, so either, like, once he had his contact, he might have like stabbed the guard, then ran for it. Like, I don't know. I, we still don't know. Like, we're trying to figure out like some of his escape plan. Uh, he did at one point, uh, did a bit like uh, Shawshank Redemption, where he crawled through the sewage. Mm -hmm. So he pulled that one off. Uh, if not, just the classic break in the metal bars, out he went. Mm -hmm. But for the solitary and also being locked up in solitary on the fourth floor, we don't know how he did it. What was his crime though? Uh, public drugness, flipping off police officers. Uh, he was just like a little rebel, pretty much. So he didn't do enough to get killed, but he just, he just did enough to get himself locked up. Exactly, yeah. Okay. Like, cool. he was a pretty wise guy. He says, I'm going to break the law, but not too much that he can <laughs> kill me for it. So. Mm -hmm. You just put one person at a time in there? Yeah. Okay. Or else that would be friendship consignment. <laughs> <laughs> And wow. And then women had the same jail? Or did At first, yes. We locked up our man and woman together. But as you can see, uh, that led to a bunch of issues, especially since they came making babies all the time. So that's not good. <laughs> so uh, after 1830, we're going to separate the sex. So here where we are, this is where the men will be locked up. And right behind, between door number four and five, so dinner that's table here. Jail. But now today they're private condos, so we say they don't have access to them, but that's where we're going to be locked up. <laughs> It's a dinner table. Wow. Did we have any debts in jail? Any what? Debts. Actually, this looks like another part of the prison here. Mm -hmm. I'm just like, you have to send me those photos, weird. Mom. I can but put some on the Instagram. Let's say the prisoner was sick or he was going to die from his injuries. We would let him go so he dies in the street. Because if a prisoner dies here, it was a responsibility of the jail to dispose of the body, pay for funerals, etc. And we're in a tight budget, so where we're going to cut costs is in the funeral expenses. So if you're about to die, get out. <laughs> <laughs> That's the Actually, bed that they used to Yeah, so you can see, like no mattresses, no pillow. It's really just a bed made out of wood. And we suddenly removed it, but we also had a pillow from the time period. 
which is basically a block of wood car like with a sort of heavy oh, circle to yeah. lay your head or neck on. But that's just for one person, but it can be used without five or seven. Yeah, so it's playing the hunger game, just like the sleeping games. So I don't think I saw this one. Yeah. That's it. The rest on the floor. That's just, oh, that's the one with the bed, right? Yeah. Wow, this is so cool. Um, oh, no, that's just a locking thing. Almost I thought that they had like candles or something. <laughs> I was like, that's not that device, no. <laughs> No, the only light of day, the only light you would have would be the light of day. There would be no candles, nothing whatsoever. Wow. Because uh, if you had a candle, you could burn each other with it or burn the guards. It so could be a weapon. Exactly. Oh, So the little wow. candlestick, uh, that's just for show. It's just like, oh, we're nice, we're prisoners, but nah, there would be no. There's no romantic candle like supper is going on here. Wow. Mm. That's incredible. These walls, too. This was where they See scratches yeah. in the walls? So during the daytime, those who are non solitary, the doors would be open. They have access to the common area to eat, play chess, as we saw earlier on, and just talk with your inmates. And after it was when night falls, back in your cell, close the door, good night. We're good? Good. Perfect. So, in that case, you guys can follow me. Time to go to school. Nice. Okay. Maybe it looks like a stump. Prison stuff, yeah. Do you feel weird in that, locked up in that old cell? Oh! Oh! First I thought it was like almost electronic or something. That was... That freaked me out. I was okay in there, but like... Yeah. 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 Okay. There's another room here. We're in the last one? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Wow. So welcome to our science lab. So for a lab that's 150 years old, this is a little pretty modern. Oh, yeah. That's so cool. The difference we have with our labs today is that we're going to call a signal every counter, put ventilation, and a bunch of security measures. Because we now know today, dipping your hands in bleach or mercury and drinking that thing up is super toxic. Please don't do it. So, yes, you can touch that. So, do you guys? 
is no webs with MD. What? Web MD. Yes. Yes, perfect. So this didn't appear out of the blue. Uh, we also had a web MD back in the 19th century. This is it right here. So this is the home physician, Encyclopedia of Medicine. So this book right here will help you treat anything at home. And I mean literally anything. <laughs> So, of course, you might take how to treat chronic fright at home, uh, cancer of the brain at home. What? Yeah! <laughs> yeah! Sky's the limit, buddy! <laughs> uh, what's the thing? Okay, let's, let's do it. Actually, I'm curious as to well. how we can treat your favorite Favorite thing by doctors back in the day, but like, yeah, I don't treat the person. Well, like for example, syphilis, how to treat that. Uh, you would consume mercury, apply mercury on your ding dong. So, <laughs> you would treat your syphilis, but it would fall off. So, if you want to keep it, uh, just don't use this medication. Okay, how, okay, just, where is it? Like, okay, leprosy, we don't care about leprosy. No, no. There's no, like, Index like we have today, which is really annoying. <laughs> Puberty. Yeah, there's also, for example, marriage. That's a disease, guys. Watch out. Uh, <laughs> how to treat your marriage at home by a doctor. <laughs> Take a disease. What are these insects? More books. There were cell blocks as well, but they were all demolished to create both giant rooms for the Wow. That's a beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. Welcome to our library. So this is the biggest, oldest, and only English library in all of Quebec City. We have over 26,000 books here. So below, this is where we have our more modern collection like Harry Potter, Hunger Games, Game of Thrones, all that good stuff. And above where we are, this is our older collection dating from the 18th century, 19th century, and 20th century. So basically, we have more books here in Latin than in French. Wow. If not, uh, you might have noticed we have a bunch of artifacts lying around. I'll talk about one of them. It's this desk right here. So, who are my Americans? Raise your hand. Okay, so quite a few, perfect. So, I think I love about your country is that you're very proud of your founding fathers like George Washington, Thomas Jefferson, John Adams, all that people. Here in Canada, pardon my language, we don't give two shits. <laughs> oh my god. Here's the proof. That's terrible. This desk right here used to belong to Sir Georges Etienne Cartier, who wrote the Canadian Confederation. Basically, it's your equivalent to your Thomas Jefferson. So, in the States, if this would be Thomas Jefferson's desk where he wrote the Declaration of Independence, uh, it would probably be glassed up, security guards, like super protective showcase. Us? Nah, nah. We're still using it as it's a normal desk. So, if our Indian <laughs> were to drop hot chocolate or coffee on it, well, we just caused the stain of 2019 on this historical landmark. So, yeah. So, as a historian, every time I look at that desk, I'm like, at least put a nap on it. Like, yeah. yeah. So, so what was this room used as during the prison days? So during the prison days, uh, where we are, this is the chapel where they have to go to church every Sunday. Mm -hmm. And below and beneath us, that would be the old cell block. Oh, so it still sells. Yeah. It's everywhere. So wow. Why, when it took eight months to renovate this whole building, Good job! Yeah. <laughs> like, it doesn't look like it used to be a jail here. And today, just to fix a road takes six months. Because it's serious demolition, right? Like Serious demolition and also like reconstruction from within. And get to keep wow. Outside, so. That's incredible. So I'll let you guys walk around. So how it's organized, very simple. We've got here Canadian history, Africa, Middle East, Europe, war and ideologies, uh, Australian continent, voyages and indigenous people, and then Right there. And I'll remove that gold chain just for a second. Okay. Look at that old clock too, eh, Benny? And there's some swords on the wall. Look at these guys. 
Got some old swords. Come back a sec. It's like they. Hey, welcome, guys. So, on another episode of historic, um, basically the oldest jail of Quebec, and we got a special interview with a gentleman here who's historic guide of the jail, and so he's going to talk to us about the gallows. So, we're really excited. About it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is like an oh yeah, you can so you can introduce yourself, and then we can yeah, you just and and then talk the first part. Yeah. Hi, my name is Anthony. Welcome to the Morning Center. Cool. So this right here was the first common jail of Quebec City. If you look by our windows, you'll see we have a bunch of black dots. That's where the metal bars used to be. But we chopped them, removed them, because afterwards it was transformed into a university. And that'd be kind of like sketchy and creepy if you have bars in front of your school, so they had to go. <laughs> and we also had to remove this right here. So on the second floor, directly above my head, there used to be a balcony. And this balcony had a very particular function. It was to hang people. <laughs> so we're going to have 16 hangings in total. Wow. The last of which is this beautiful, sexy man right here named John Meehan. <laughs> so really love the beer going on. <laughs> so him, what happened is that in 1864, he accidentally stabbed his cousin five times. <laughs> so due to oh, that, God. Uh, we couldn't like forgive him. So when they came, he's going to walk into the balcony, do his speech in French and English, then we're going to put a bag on his head, rope around the neck, and then hang him. Wow. His body would be therefore dangling right there from the entrance. Wow. So that's how far it went down. Yeah. Wow. We tried to break the neck, but like sometimes we didn't get a possibility, so we'd just be choking for like minutes. Oh, God. Yeah. And so, you know, like today we put like flowers or mistletoes or entrances? Yeah. Well, here we put dead bodies. Oh, God. Very welcoming sort of institution. <laughs> Do you know how long the um, the rope was for hanging people? Like it they really usually depend, did? like on the budget. And like there were many cases, because as you can see with that door, I'll just play it back up. Yep. There was a trap. So sometimes some of our prisoners, their feet are going to get stuck. And instead for choking for like two, three minutes, they're going to suffer like 10 minutes. Oh my God. And there was even one case where the rope snapped. Oh no. So what happened? The body's going to fall down. The person's going to break his ankle. And so what we have to do, reinstall the whole contraption. And then do it again. Yeah. Oh my God. So that guy, he had a really bad day. <laughs> he had to relive through the trauma and like, yeah, not great for him. Awesome. <laughs> so, during the execution, since they were public, a lot of people are going to attend. They were stretched around 8,000 to 10,000 people. Yeah. They were like big, massive festival. Wow. People would get drunk, play music, it would be like poets. Because back in the day, there's no YouTube, there's no Game of Thrones, there's not even any cinema. <laughs> so, really, the only way to thank you and your family is to someone hang. And there's no Tomb Raider. <laughs> <laughs> We're That's probably the most historical game I could come up with. <laughs> We're even going to close down the schools for the little kids to come. Yeah. And the teachers are going to say to the kids, hey, obey me, obey your parents, and obey the law, or else look what's going to happen to you. Yeah. Parenting 101 when you think about it. <laughs> so today if we were to do that, it would be unacceptable, but back in the day, it wasn't. Awesome. awesome. Any more questions? Nobody is. I'm just glad to meet you. And this was honestly the best tour I've been on. So that's you awesome, buddy. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. Share that to everyone. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Thanks, man. Welcome, so there you go. So we had a good day at the Morin Center. And hopefully, uh, if, if you and your family come to Quebec City, this is an awesome place. It's actually missed most of the time. People go to the Plains of Abraham and other areas like so like come check out the library there's historical there's literally a historical library we have the whole prison to check out and you can bring your camera so this is another place so i have another episode of uh, ontario paranormal research society and the sewer gators have a good one